We worship you this evening, Lord. We thank you for your presence here with us. Oh God, we thank you for the hope that is set before us. We thank you for heaven. Glory and honor and praise and thanksgiving be unto you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your goodness and mercy, God. We worship you, we praise you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be in the presence of God? Hey, His presence is, is with us tonight, and we're grateful for that. And, you know, I was, I was just thinking, as she's closing out that song, you know, to stand in the presence of God and worship in the Lord and, and um, to enter into that holy of holies. And I was, as I was worshiping and giving God glory, my mind quickly went to the thought, you know, there are people even right now they're working overtime, looking for a, a way to find another place to live. <laughs> right? I'm talking about another planet. I guess you're done, huh? She, man, she's... I don't know what's going on. I guess I might go ahead. Okay, just go ahead and preach. It's fine. We didn't plan all that. We're just going to roll, roll with it as it is. And she's done. We're done. <laughs> it's all right. It's good. Let's, let's let God bless us. Get out of the way and let God have his way. <laughs> I'm talking about us, you know. We don't need to always stick to the stick to that you know protocol of things. But you know, different ones they want to go colonize Mars and they want to go find a different planet to live, and and you know that's fine if it can make it happen, whatever. But God already have another place for us is what I was thinking. Amen. He already have another planet called heaven. He already have a place where Jesus said He said, "Let not your heart." You know, be troubled, right? He said, don't be afraid. Don't let your heart trouble you. He said, we believe in God. Believe also in Him. For in our Father's house are many mansions. He already got a place prepared for us. There's already a place. But it's so sad that people doesn't want, or they don't want what God have in store for them. Yeah. Right? They want to go find their own place. And God is saying, yeah, you already got a planet where the streets are paved with gold. The tree of life, the water of life, all the good things are already there waiting for you. You don't need to come up with a different way to go find a new planet to live. God already have a planet for us. right? When, when, when we're done with this one, and, 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 and the good news is He's going to renovate this one anyways. And he's going he's to bring us right back to this earth to rule and to reign with Him forever and ever. So thank God for a place prepared for those who want it. And I want it. Amen. Yeah. I want heaven. I'm not going to hate my life here on earth. I'm going to thank God in the sense of, oh, I'm so miserable. No, I'm going to enjoy the life God gave me to live. I don't know how long that will be. It could be a short one. It can be a long one. It can be a middle. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows what tomorrow holds. But uh, you know, wh while he allowed me to be here and to live and enjoy it, I'll be grateful and I'll be thankful. But all the while I'm doing that, I'll be like Abraham and the saints of old. I'm looking for a city, <laughs> right? I'm looking for a city that have foundation whose builder and maker is God Almighty. That's my home. Heaven is my home. And I, I've already, um, you know, already secured my spot in there in the sense that I've allowed Jesus Christ to be my personal Lord and Savior. I just got to hold on all the way to the end. Amen? <coughs> Get that out. I get all choked up talking about heaven. <clears throat> Not really. That is something. <laughs> Cause me to cough. <clears throat> I want to read to you from Second Samuel for tonight's message. Second Samuel chapter chapter um, twenty two, reading verse twenty six through thirty two, and um, really this is uh, speaking about David, and it's also the same exact thing pretty much as written in the Psalms, also Psalms 18. If you read the 18th Psalm, verses 25 to 29, the same exact thing except he threw another verse in there, you know, another verse, but it was the same exact, almost the same exact thing written. He said, With the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful, and with the upright man, thou will show thyself upright. Isn't that wonderful how fair God is? Right? If you're upright, God is going to show himself upright, right? You do good to God, God will do good to you. He said, with the pure, thou will show thyself pure. And with the froward, thou will show thyself unsavory. 
And those who don't want to accept God and want to be hard towards Him and want to be froward towards Him, He said, I'll, I'll treat you just the way you treat me. <laughs> right? And then in verse 28, He said, And the afflicted people thou will save. But thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayest bring them down. For thou art my lamp, O Lord. And the Lord will light my darkness. Now in the psalm, when he wrote this in the psalm, exacting the psalm, he said in verse 29, For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. In the psalm, in verse 28, he said, For thou will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. That's the only thing he changed, you know, in a little bit, but it's the same exact thing that was written. You know, it probably sounds a little better in the psalms. Thou will light my candle. Right? It's more of a poetic way. The Lord God will enlighten my darkness. He said in verse 30, For by thee have I run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in Him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God. That word save means accept, right? And so we want to use verse 30 as our text. He said, For by thee have I run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. And I want to use that tonight to help the Lord for a short while. I want to preach in a message entitled Obstacles. Obstacles. Let's look to God in prayer. Who want to pray tonight? Anybody? Pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank God for, for obstacles, right? <laughs> and this word obstacles, as we all know, how many all know what an obstacle is? You better. <laughs> Don't me. I just give you a definition though. I already know you already know what it is, but we throw a definition out there. Maybe something you haven't thought about, or maybe you already know about it. But it's something that blocks or blocks your way. It prevents something that blocks, prevents or hinder hinders our progress. And a lot of times we look at obstacles as, as in a negative sense. We look at obstacles, man, you know, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that, but there's all these obstacles that are hindering me, they're stopping me from, from doing what I want to do or what I need to do. And a lot of times it can be looked at as something negative, and it is in a sense if it's stopping your progress in one sense, it's negative. But it's also, obstacles is also a positive thing. You know, a lot of times in, in different, um, like sports, or for instance in the military, they got what they call the obstacle course, right? And it's really not a negative thing. It's really to test you or to, to um, help you to see where you are. Can you really make it over this wall? Or can you pull yourself up on a rope? Or can you hang on a rope and crawl all the way over this ditch or this r r um, river or whatever it, whatever it is without falling, right? And it's not a negative thing. It's something to test your strength and your resolve of how much you have learned. You know, they have in sports, they have obstacles that they, they train with. I know um, what uh, the, um, we call it, Ninja Warrior or whatever. That's an obstacle course, right? And there's obstacles there, and, and people are gladly to take it on as a challenge. I can do this. I, in my mind, I can do this. And then you try doing it, and you fall at the first thing you try. It seems like the easiest thing. Just jump on this, and jump on that, and you can't make it over. Right? But in your mind, you think you can. Right? In your mind, you're like, man, I can, I can do this, and there's no problem at all until you try it. Or they try to pull themselves up on those little things. And you say, I can do that. I thought I could do it one time with a park. I took Natalie. I can do a pull-up. I used to be so good at doing pull-ups. It's like nothing to me. And I jumped in the thing, and I just hung there for a while. I was like, no, I, it's not, I'm not going anywhere. And I said, okay, I can do this monkey bar. I took her over doing a deal. I was like, I barely made it through. I was like, wow, Lord. She got stuck in it once. 
<laughs> but we think we can, and, and, and because in our mind we, we think we can do it, but our body said, no, no, you haven't been doing this for a long time, you need some training, right? And so, but in, in a sense of an obstacle, it's not always a bad thing. It's not always something that it's a, in a, has a negative uh, connotation or a negative impact in our life. Yes, it's there, it prevents us, but it also pushes us to be better, right? It pushes us to think different. It pushes us to, to um, say, well, this is an obstacle, but I can do this. And, and I can be better at what I'm doing. And so when David wrote this, um, this, this, he wrote in the psalm, but when it was written about this, he said, he was relying on God. He said, for by thee have I run through a troop. A troop is an obstacle, right? As a soldier, he looked at it and he said, here is this obstacle and I can run away from it. Or I can rely on God and run right through it. And I don't know if he was using it in a poetical sense or he actually did it. I'm not going to put it past David, man. He took, he took, took down Goliath, right? So I'm not going to put it past him. He said in, this, in the writing, he said, My God taught me how to war that a bow of steel, I can break it with, or bend it with my hands, right? He said, God has given me so much power to fight and make me such a great warrior. He said, I can do these things, so I'm not going to knock him. <laughs> right? Maybe he did run through a troop. You know, and he had soldiers that one man will take on 800, right? We know Samson destroy, what, a thousand men at one time? So I'm not going to put it past these Jew guys, Jewish guys, right? There are some bad dudes, you know. One that went in there, he fought giant, fought lions, all his different, you know, different, different warriors that God had. So I'm not going to say it's just poetical. It could very well be that, you know, it's a met metaphorical thing, but we'll just give him credit tonight because he did slay Goliath, right? <laughs> right? He did bring down the giant when nobody else wanted to bring him down. He did go out there and fight and won. And, he, and the Bible said that when he went out there and he wore that all the ladies got out there and they began to sing, Saul, you slay your thousand, but David, he slay his ten thousands, right? So he was a great, mighty warrior. And so we'll give him credit tonight, whether it's biblical or not, we'll give him credit that by God, he ran through a troop. And back then, you know it's not easy to run through a troop because they had sharp objects. They had swords and knives and axe and all kind of stuff in their hand and shield and everything. And so when he looked at it, he looked at it as an obstacle. Yes, it's an obstacle. He said, but by God's power, I can run right through it. Amen? I can run right through it. And then he looked at this wall. He said, by my God have I run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. And we know back then their walls are not like today, you know, how we have walls. Oh, we put up a six, six foot fence, and he's like, oh, this is pretty high, <laughs> you know. They built walls back then, big walls, massive walls, the walls of Jericho, right? Tall, strong walls. He said, once again, we'll give him credit, right? Maybe he invented parkour, I don't know, just kidding. <laughs> It's not biblical, you know, people judge you, you know, who's listening online. Oh, he said David was the first one who invented parkour. I'm just joking, okay? You never know. Just for, for a comedic thing, <laughs> or whatever. Maybe he was good. <laughs> maybe by God, maybe he ran up and he saw this wall, and the angel of the Lord just picked him up and leaped him. You know, he was a real Superman, right? <laughs> right? I don't know, like I said, if it's, it's factual or not, but he said... Something that was an obstacle, a wall. Something that was an obstacle, a troop of soldiers. He said, God, give me the ability to overcome them. God was the one that gave me the ability to run right through these things. God was the one that gave me the ability to make it over all these obstacles. And so tonight, yes, there may be obstacles at times in our life, but if we look to God and we look to Jesus Christ, who knows what great things He can do in our lives. Amen? Who knows what great things He can allow us to do. He can allow us to do the things that we think that are impossible because there's an obstacle in front of us. There's a challenge in front Front of us, there is something that is blocking us or preventing us or hindering us from moving forward. But thanks be unto God tonight, we can shout with David, By my God, I overcome this obstacle. By my God, I make it through this. Yes, it seems hard and difficult and challenging, but I can do it with the help of God. Amen. I set a goal for myself, it's hard, it's challenging. By God, I can do it. There is things in my life. 
that wants to limit me and hold me down, but by my God, I can do it. An obstacle doesn't have to be a negative thing, and it doesn't have to push us down. With God's help, we can rise over all our obstacles and trials and difficulties and challenges. With God's help, we can do it tonight. Amen? Amen. We can do it tonight with the help of the Lord. He depended upon the Lord. He trusted in the power of God. He relied on the Lord. He didn't say, by my ability I did it. He didn't say, by my training and my education and, uh, and everything that I did. He said, by my God. Amen. And that's, uh, that's who are boasting tonight. We're not going to boast in our own strength. We're not going to boast in our own ability. We'll get on our knees and say, Lord, help me do this. Lord, give me the power to do this. God, give me the strength to do this. Uh, we look at our obstacles uh, like a troop. God, give me the ability so I can run right through this. God, give me the ability. This may seem like a wall, something that is so high that I can't get over it. But God, give me the ability and I can run and jump right over this obstacle. With God's help, uh, who knows what we can do. Amen. Even David will write later on in the Psalms. He says, some trust in chariots and others trust in horses. He said, but we will trust in the Lord. He was showing us time and time and time again that all his victories and all his accomplishments in life, he attributed to God Almighty, that God is the one that has given me the victory over all these things. God is the one that has given me the ability to rise over all my obstacles and challenges and battles and, and, and difficulties and trials and temptation. Every Everything that come against me that seems like an obstacle, God has given me victory over them all. Amen? Amen. He's given me victory over them all. Maybe there are things in your personal life that you're facing that seems like an obstacle. And it may seem something negative. But look at it through the eyes of God. Or look at it through the eyes of David. God is going to give me the, the victory over this. Look at it as a challenge, as an obstacle course. <laughs> in your mind, I'm a ninja warrior. I can run and jump and I can catch this thing, right? And I can climb this wall, whatever. You know, look at it. Sometimes we just got to look at it in a different, through some different lens, right? And look at the obstacle. Yes, there's a negative part to it, but look at the positive. It will make me better when I get to the other side. And, and really the point what I'm trying to, 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 to bring out tonight is this. He looked at it as an accomplishment, right? He looked at it as, as an accomplishment. He said, by my God. I ran through this troop. I accomplished this by God, right? He said, by my God, I leaped over this wall. And so to him, he was looking back at it. Even when he wrote it in the psalm, he's looking back, man, look at what I accomplished. <laughs> yes, it was an obstacle, but look at what I accomplished. I, I, I run through it, I leaped over it, I got the victory, and I live to tell about it, amen? And now I can inspire others, if I can do it, you can do it too, right? And that's what he's writing it about, he's letting us know, he said, by God I did these things, and if we will follow in the footsteps, in the faith of, of, of this man of God, we can do the same thing too, right? We can do the same thing also, not necessarily run through a troops of soldiers, or leap over a great giant wall, but our our battles, our challenge. Maybe there are some challenges in your family. You can do it with the help of God. Maybe there are some challenges in your marriage. You can do it with the help of God. Amen. Maybe there are some challenges in, in your personal life, financial life, whatever aspect of your life. There seem obstacles and challenges. Look to Jesus. Look to God. Trust in the power of God that God can give us the ability, the courage, the strength, and the motivation that we need to run right through it and not let it be a hindrance but let it be an accomplishment when we get to the other side by my God look what I accomplish with God's help and we know all the great things that David accomplished in his life he attributed all to God now we look throughout the Bible, we see that uh, all these things we can look back you know from, from, from story after story after story there's obstacle in every accomplishment in, in, in their life, in people's life that live, to, live for God by faith, there were all kind of obstacles, all kind of hindrances. But here we are today reading about them. You know, we read about Noah. There's, there was a lot of obstacles. 
Right? There's a lot of hindrance. They made fun of him, no doubt. No, what are you doing? Building an ark? Are you crazy? It's not going to rain. Come on, man. <laughs> what are you trying to do? You know, you got to go look, look at all the work you're doing, Noah. You got your son there with you, cutting down trees and getting the wood ready and doing all this work. And, and there's all kind of hindrances. <laughs> when the flood came, guess who? Who was shouting the victory, <laughs> right? Yes, who was bragging? By my God, I escaped this judgment. Right? By my God, uh, when the world uh, was destroyed, by my God, uh, because I listened to him and didn't let these obstacles uh, be n- a negative thing, I just kept going, I kept pushing, I kept preaching, I kept doing what God wanted me to do. And now when the whole world is being destroyed, me and my family are safe, <laughs> right? We're safe, we're safe because we trusted in, the God, and trusted in the Lord. Now we look at Job, and like I said, we go through all these stories, right? We look at Job and he can say, well, well, Job, you got a double blessing in the end. What about the obstacle? <laughs> what about what he had to go through? What about his trial, his test, his uh, challenge? But he kept believing in the Lord. All his friends trying to discourage him. You, Job, you sinned against God. You did this and that. Da, 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 da. But in the end, God blessed him with twice as much. Right? It was an accomplishment. Maybe Job looked back and said, Ooh. Look what God did. Right? Look what God did. The whole, it seemed like the whole world was against me. Every, all my friends, my wife, uh, you know, all these people, he said all his acquaintances, all those that respect him, he lost the respect of everybody. He said when he walked into the city, the, uh, the prince got to hold their mouth in his presence. Right? The young man bowed before him when he came into the city. Nobody wanted to respect him. Right? As an obstacle, a challenge, but when he powered through and he made it to the other, other side, they all begin one by one. Oh, Job, here, here's a blessing for you. We're sorry, buddy. Here, here, we, we, we were wrong about this. We thought you messed up, but you didn't. You just had to face some obstacles. And now he can look back and say, look what God did, right? Amen. Look what God did. Throughout the whole Bible, he can look at it all. You know, Jesus, he had some obstacles. <laughs> the cross wasn't easy. He preached. The people he had to preach, they didn't want to listen to him. Most of them didn't want to listen to him. They lied about him. They, 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 found, they found fault with him. They criticized him. All these things uh, they brought against him. It was all obstacles. And he could look at it, and, and Paul and Peter, they could all look at it as obstacles. Well, well, all these hindrances is there. Even Paul will later on write and said he said a great door. I think he said in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 69. He said, for a great door and effectual is open unto me. He said, and there are many adversaries, right? He said, God is opening a door for me to do something great. But he said, there are many adversaries. There are many obstacles. There are many hindrances. But that didn't stop him. We talked about it in the Bible study last night. He said, what? I'm ready to be offered up, right? He said, I'm ready to my time of departure has come. He said, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go to receive my crown. I'm ready to go receive all God have in store for me. Yes, there are obstacles, but these men of God, these women of God, they didn't look at it as something negative. They look at it as an accomplishment. When they get through, when they get through the other side of it all, they said, look what the Lord has done. Look at what God brought me through. Look at what the things that, that the Lord allowed me to do. Yes, it, it, it was tough. It was hard. It was difficult. There are times I didn't think like I was, I didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> there are times when I feel like, oh, Lord God, I don't know if I can go on any longer. Well, because my God was there with me. Because my God was right beside me. And he was helping me. And he was giving me counsel. And he was giving me guidance. And he was giving me wisdom. And he was giving me all the spiritual help I need. And the strength I need. And the energy I need. We can say with David, by my God, I run through that troop. Amen. By my God, I made it through that battle. By my God, I leaped over that wall. Yes, it was an obstacle, but I made it right through it. Amen. And I don't know about you. I remember, man, when we went through an obstacle course and we got to first, I told them, they were like, we need volunteers to go through it twice. All them soldiers, we raised our hands. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. And we got to the end and only two people step up. It was tough. It was hard. Or we look back and we're like, man, that was kind of cool, wasn't it? You know, I didn't think I could jump 
and catch myself on that beam like that, you know. I didn't think I could run up that cargo net that quickly and just scale over and get to the other side. When we look back and say, I did that. We look at the gas chamber. I never know, I thought I was going to make it through that. But we made it through, right? There were all obstacles. But the thing is, what I'm sharing tonight is when we get to the other side, it becomes an, an accomplishment, not an obstacle any longer. Right? And, and, and that's really the point I'm trying to share is the obstacle, right? You can look at it a negative thing, or you can look at it, man, when I get to the other side, then it's an accomplishment. It's no longer an obstacle. It's something that I can say, I did that with God's help. And that's what David was saying in so many words. By my God, I did this. It was an obstacle, it was a challenge, but by my God, I did it. Amen? And so tonight, as, as she began to play and sing, you know, let's look at all our challenges in that way. Let's look at it as what the accomplishment will be after we make it through, right? The accomplishment, the result, the victory we will celebrate, the rejoicing, and even so when we get to heaven, the eternal life, the eternal blessings, eternal peace, ruling and reigning forever with God, being in the presence of God. Look what we've accomplished by our God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for this word tonight. Thank you for your love. Thank you for everything you've done in our life. We just want to give you praise and glory and honor tonight. We thank you so much, Lord, for being with us. And that we can make our boast and our brag in you. Bless now all that trust in you. In Jesus' name. for his goodness and mercy we just want to give God praise tonight for all that he has done in our life 
And thank God that we, that, you know, we can, we can have that mentality like David to do something better, something greater for Jesus. We'll close the service in prayer. For all you join us in line, have a wonderful week. And God bless you. And um, remember, we'll be, we'll be back in church Sunday morning, 9.30. And then um, Saturday, soul winning. And we need to have some, some lunch sometime after church. So we're trying to <laughs> get it sometime this month, maybe next week or the week after. We'll do like a fellowship or something like that. Got to eat, right? Got to eat, man. Got to eat. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, God, for this service. We just want to bless you and praise you and worship you, God. Your presence has been so good and so strong here tonight. Continue, God, to use your word. Use that hammer. Use that sword. Use that fire, God, to speak to your people and strengthen us as we look to you in all things. And we can all make our boast. By my God, I have done this. And look at the accomplishments that we've done with our God, with the help of our God. We love and appreciate you, Jesus. Thank you so much. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen.